and this is how you do marketing right. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 promotional stunts for movies. Well, doh, this is obviously a PR stunt, but it's a good one. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the greatest and most innovative promotional stunts that were used to generate hype or buzz for a film. Apparently don't need to see the movie in order to find the million dollars. There are clues in the movie, but the clues are also on the boxes of this retail product, which has a tie-in with the movie. Number 10, Telekinetic Coffee Shop Girl, Carrie. In Stephen King's novel, Carrie is an abused high school girl who discovers that she has telekinetic abilities and uses them to kill students and destroy her hometown. It's very Stephen King. So, to promote the 2013 remake, the people behind the movie had a coffee shop play a little prank on its customers by featuring an actress throwing another actor against a wall, moving tables, and making books and pictures fly from their spots, all by using her supposed telekinetic abilities. Real customers freaked the hell out, and the video soon went viral, amassing over 68 million views on YouTube as of early 2018. <laughs> Number 9, Devil Baby, Devil's Do. To promote Devil's Do, an animatronic devil baby was created and let loose within the streets of New York City. The baby had a grotesque appearance, complete with black eyes and bile around its mouth, and it would create all sorts of havoc, like flipping cops the bird, popping up and scaring passers-by, and projectile vomiting some sort of milk-like liquid. It would be terrifying to witness, but it doesn't take itself too seriously either. It's a mostly harmless prank, and the video footage of it certainly made an impression on the internet and got people talking. Number 8. Free Pot, American Ultra Yes, unbelievably, American Ultra gave out free weed at Comic-Con. However, it's not like they just grabbed a handful of pot and made it rain on the crowd. Instead, it was only available to those who had a legal, medicinal cannabis card. Real Care Incorporated delivered free samples of a unique American Ultra strain to those who had a card, and it undoubtedly made their days. Amid the many forms of entertainment vying for attention at Comic-Con, free weed is certainly a fantastic way to get your name out there, and you help some people who genuinely need the drug. Win-win. Number 7. Transforming 7-Elevens into Quickie Marts, The Simpsons Movie To promote the then-upcoming Simpsons movie, several 7-Eleven locations were transformed into Quickie Marts, complete with redesigned exteriors and Simpsons-themed treats like Buzz Cola and Krusty O's. The cost was a quoted $10 million to implement, but it was a resounding success, with the altered 7-Eleven seeing a 30% spike in profits. The movie eventually went on to grow $74 million in its opening weekend, making it the third-highest opening weekend for an animated film, behind only Shrek 2 and Shrek the Third. Who needs the Quickie Mart? We all do, apparently. Who needs the Quickie Mart? I do. Number 6. Real Chucky, Child's Play. And Chucky's only a doll, right? Those poor tourists just wanted to see Times Square and ended up getting chased by Chucky brandishing a butcher knife. To promote the 20th anniversary DVD release of Child's Play, a horde of actors dressed as Chucky descended upon Times Square, where they ran amok and playfully caused terror among the hustle and bustle, complete with butcher knives, cleavers, and axes. While the actors don't look that much like Chucky, especially considering Chucky is, like, one foot tall, it would still be delightfully terrifying to see a human-sized one running towards you with an outstretched knife. Hello, Andy. Number 5. Treasure Hunt – Million Dollar Mystery in this flick, a White House employee hides $4 million in various locations, but only $3 million of it is found, so audiences were given a chance to find this money in real life by buying Gladlock bags and filling out a form, declaring where the money was located from clues given in the movie. 14-year-old Alicia Jones guessed that the money was in the Statue of Liberty's nose, and she subsequently won the prize in a random draw, beating out thousands of others who correctly guessed the location as well. Given that this Tom Bosley-led film cost $10 million and earned back less than a tenth of that, she was the only winner here. And I didn't win the $25,000 instant prize, but I can use this to save 15 cents on my next purchase. I'm not sure what all of this has to do with the art of the cinema, but I guess it's an interesting promotion. Number 4. Bruno Flies Into Eminem's Lap Bruno Sasha Baron Cohen certainly knows how to generate buzz. If he isn't spilling ashes all over Ryan Seacrest, he's flying into Eminem's lap and sticking his butt in the rapper's face. Such was the case at the 2009 MTV Movie Awards, when Cohen, performing as Bruno, flew over the crowd on wires before something went wrong, and he landed on Eminem's lap. Eminem, nice to meet you! Em was seemingly pissed, as he swore a couple of times, as is his way, and stormed out in a huff. It was embarrassing and cringy as hell, but it turned out that Eminem was in on it all along. Number 3. Breaking News, Independence Day David, haven't you been watching? This is directed, Constantino. David! General. Good afternoon. 
So far, the phenomenon has not caused any damage. If you're going to promote your $75 million blockbuster, you either go big or you go home. Fox took advantage of the huge crowd that Super Bowl 30 would bring, and spent $1.3 million on a brief trailer to be shown during commercial break. The trailer quickly showed people running in the streets, before it cut to the White House being blown up by an alien ship. With special effects that were unheard of at the time, the caption, Enjoy the Super Bowl, it may be your last, followed. The gamble paid off, and the ad generated an insane amount of publicity for the movie. Number 2. It's a Bomb, Mission Impossible 3 filed this one under the Someone Surely Got Fired category. Just me? No, not you. In order to promote MI3, 4,500 Los Angeles Times boxes were rigged with a device that would play the Mission Impossible theme when the box was opened. <laughs> However, many of the devices failed to stay in place and dropped into the newspapers. Passersby noticed, and believing the devices to be explosives, called 911. This forced bomb squads to actually detonate boxes and caused a veterans hospital to be evacuated. The backlash from the botched stunt led John O'Laughlin, a VP with the LA Times, to comment, quote, We weren't expecting anything like this. You don't say. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Police say a passenger finds a suspicious package under I-93 by the Sullivan Square T-Stop. 93 North and the Orange Line shut down for a good two hours. Do you have an appointment today? Yeah, uh, not so much. <laughs> Number one, pretending like it was real, the Blair Witch Project. I was very naive. If you weren't around for the Blair Witch Project, it's hard to imagine just how much discussion and hype this movie's marketing team were able to draw. The film's website featured fake police reports and interviews, while missing posters were distributed during screenings to make the fictional events seem more realistic. When coupled with the movie's found footage gimmick, which was a new concept at the time, people began to believe that the footage and story were real. The campaign worked incredibly well, as the movie grossed $248 million on a measly $60,000 budget. And that, friends, is how you market a movie. I really don't think that the film would have done nearly as much money, you know, as but much business has done if it weren't for the website. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.